Hello friends, welcome to my channel Learning Electronics. In this lecture of Nyquist plot, we are going to solve first numerical related to Nyquist plot. We had already studied the steps of solving the Nyquist plot problems and we had also seen the steps of investigating the stability of the system using Nyquist criteria. So before starting the video, please subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon so that you can get more updated videos from here. Question number one is estimate the stability of the system whose open loop transfer function is given by g of s into h of s is equal to 50 divided by s plus 1 into s plus 2. So from this equation of the transfer function we can see that there is no single s present in this denominator. So therefore there is no pole at origin present in the transfer function. Now to find out the stability of the system and to draw the Nyquist plot we have to consider a Nyquist path in the S plane. This is our S plane. Here we have considered a Nyquist path. In this the red dotted semicircle is not considered in our Nyquist path because here we can see that there is no pole at origin present in this equation. So if there is a pole at origin present in the equation then only we have to draw a semicircle around the origin O with radius tending to 0. Now we will not take this semicircle around this origin of radius tending to 0 because there is no pole at origin in this equation. Now we will divide this whole path in three sections section 1 section 2 and section 3 and we have to remember that the Nyquist path direction should be taken in the clockwise direction so this yellow line shows the required Nyquist path now we will divide this whole Nyquist path in three sections section number 1 c1 section number 2 c2 section number 3 c3 now what we have to do first we have to put s is equal to j omega in this equation we will get g of j omega into h of j omega is equal to 50 divided by j omega plus 1 into j omega plus 2. Now we have to find out the magnitude of this equation. Magnitude of g of j omega into h of j omega is represented by capital M which is equal to 50 divided by for this equation we will have magnitude under root omega square plus 1 and for this equation we have magnitude under root omega square plus 2 square that is equal to 4. Now we have to find out angle of g of j omega into h of j omega which is represented by phi it is equal to for this 50 the face angle will be 0 degree then for this j omega plus 1 the face angle will be tan inverse of omega divided by 1 when we shift this denominator value to the numerator it will become minus of tan inverse omega then for this j omega plus 2 it will be minus of tan inverse omega by 2 so the final phase angle will be equal to minus of tan inverse omega minus of tan inverse omega by 2 now we have to map all the sections c1 c2 c3 one by one first we will take mapping of c1 section which is starting at minus j infinity and ending at minus j0 so the start point is at omega is equal to minus infinity and end point is at omega is equal to minus 0 now we will put the values of omega in this equation of magnitude and phase angle to find the corresponding values of magnitude and phase angle. First we will put omega is equal to minus infinity in this equation we will get 50 divided by infinity that means magnitude is equal to 0 and when we put omega is equal to minus infinity in this equation we will get phase is equal to minus of tan inverse minus infinity then minus of tan inverse of minus infinity. We know that tan inverse infinity is 90 degree. So when we move this minus sign here, we will get plus tan inverse infinity plus tan inverse infinity. So here we will get 90 plus 90 degree is equal to plus 180 degree. So at omega is equal to minus infinity phase angle will be plus 180 degree we are getting. Now we will put omega is equal to 0 in this equation we will get 50 by 2 which is equal to 25 magnitude. Now we will put omega is equal to 0 in this phase angle equation we will get minus of 10 over 0 minus of 10 over 0 is equal to 0 degree. Now we have to find out the rotation of the plot which is given by equation phi infinity minus phi 0. 
so here phi infinity is the value which corresponds to the end point that is 0 degree and phi 0 is the value of phase angle corresponding to start point that is plus 180 degree so here we have minus 180 degree which is equal to minus of 180 degree since this value is negative the rotation of plot will be in the clockwise direction now next step is to draw the mapping of c1 section in the f plane or in the gh plane first we have to take the magnitude is equal to 0 along the plus 180 degree line this is our plus minus 180 degree line this is our 0 degree line so along this plus 180 degree line we have to take the magnitude 0 this is the magnitude is equal to 0 point at omega is equal to minus infinity so since we are taking plus 180 degree for omega is equal to minus infinity our plot will move in the upward direction like this and at m is equal to 25 the phase angle is 0 degree so we will mark m is equal to 25 at omega is equal to minus 0 on the 0 degree line so this plot will end at this point m is equal to 25 like this and rotation of plot is clockwise direction so this will be marked like this okay so this is the polar plot for this c1 section now we will take mapping of c2 section so the c2 section is starting from plus j0 and ending at plus j infinity so the starting point will be our omega is equal to plus 0 and ending point is omega is equal to plus infinity when we put omega is equal to 0 in this equation of magnitude we will get 25 and when we put omega is equal to plus infinity in this equation of magnitude we will get m is equal to 0 now we will put omega is equal to plus 0 in this equation of phase angle we will get phi is equal to 0 degree and when we put omega is equal to plus infinity in this equation of phase angle we will get phi is equal to minus of tan inverse infinity minus of tan inverse infinity we know that tan inverse infinity is 90 degree so we will get minus 90 minus 90 is equal to minus 180 degree so at omega is equal to plus infinity phase angle will be minus 180 degree now we need to find out the rotation of the plot which is given by phi infinity minus phi zero here phi infinity is the corresponding value of the phase angle of the ending point that is minus 180 degree and phi 0 corresponds to the phase angle of the starting point that is 0 degree. So here we are getting minus 180 degree which is a negative value that means our polar plot will rotate in the clockwise direction. Now next step is to draw the polar plot of the C2 section for this we will take this table values here we can see that we have two angle values that is 0 degree and minus 180 degree so this is our plus minus 180 degree line this is 0 degree line now since here minus 180 degree given so we have to move in the downward direction so at omega is equal to plus 0 the magnitude is 25 and phase angle is 0 degree so this magnitude is equal to 25 we will mark on the 0 degree line somewhere here this is m is equal to 25 and it is corresponding to omega is equal to plus 0 now we will mark omega is equal to plus infinity corresponding value of magnitude is m is equal to 0 and omega value is plus infinity to draw this polar plot we have to move along the minus 180 degree line like this starting from m is equal to 0 and this polar plot will end at m is equal to 25 along the 0 degree line and the direction of this plot will be in the clockwise direction like this next we will see the mapping of c3 section as we have discussed in the previous lecture whenever the section of the nyquist path is starting from plus j infinity and ending at minus j infinity that means the starting point of the omega is plus infinity and ending point is minus infinity then in that case the section will be mapped as a point at origin 
okay so when we put infinity in this equation of magnitude we'll get 0 0 only and phase angle is not required be because this section is mapped as origin only so c3 section is mapped as origin now we will use this table to draw the final nyquist plot so to draw the final nyquist plot we have to sum up all the polar plots which we have drawn for c1 c2 and c3 sections that means we have to combine all the polar plots of these c1 c2 c3 sections to draw the final nyquist plot so first we will draw the c1 section polar plot this was like this and c2 section polar plot was like this okay and the direction of the plot was in the clockwise direction so we'll mark like this this is m is equal to 0 point this is m is equal to 25 point now for the c1 section this omega is equal m is equal to 0 means omega is equal to minus infinity and for c2 section m is equal to 0 means omega is equal to plus infinity and for c1 section magnitude is equal to 25 means omega is equal to minus 0 and for c2 section magnitude is equal 25 means omega is equal to plus 0 so we have marked all the values on this final nyquist plot now we will mark one point to find out the stability of the system which is called as critical point minus 1 plus j0 now we can see that this nyquist plot is not covering the negative real axis that means this nyquist plot will not encircle this critical point so since this nyquist plot is not encircling this critical point the number of encirclements will be equal to 0 and since the number of encirclements is equal to 0 this system is said to be stable system because the number of encirclements of the critical point is equal to 0 the system is said to be stable system so hope you have understood the topic thank you very much for watching and please do subscribe my channel for more updates